This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> Okay, as the title of the video it probably implies, this is a video about sort of my all-time favourite guitar performances. Now, this isn't kind of um, going to show me off as having the greatest taste in the world necessarily. It's not really about that. It's just things that still stick out to me as being my favourite things that I've heard done on a guitar and that made an impact, I think, on my personal playing or things that, yeah, somehow change things for me in a way. Please feel free to leave yours in the comments below if you've got any. Um, I think other folks probably will be interested to read what other people are interested in. But if you've ever wondered, you know, what are your influences? How did you arrive at where you are in terms of like what you like the sounds of and taste and all that sort of stuff? Um, this is a video about that. So for me, it starts off with Thin Lizzy and Gary Moore. So Thin Lizzy, I can remember Basically, my dad sat me down and had the album Live and Dangerous on vinyl and said, listen to this. And I think the first thing I can remember hearing from that album is Still in Love with You and the guitar solos in that. Obviously, even as a kid, I can remember those being pretty incredible sounding. Um, as an adult, they basically are still incredible sounding. And that whole album, essentially, uh, I had a, a cassette which was like drifted out of tune and stuff. But my dad did say to me, like, if you learn the bass line to uh, Dancing in the Moonlight, I'll buy your bass. And basically, I sat down with that cassette for many years, learning tunes like Emerald, learning tunes like Still in Love With You, learning tunes like The Boys Are Back In Town, into the Cowboy Song, or the other way around, Cowboy Song, into Boys Are Black In Town. Anyway, yeah. And then Gary Moore from the Thin Lizzy thing, uh, I had like a greatest hits of his and I think the Still In Love With You solo, uh, Sean, I think you told me this, um, was originally kind of written by Gary Moore and Phil insisted that other players played that live essentially. So I don't know, but Gary Moore for sure, kind of my first guitar hero, um, learning tunes like Parisian Walkways and uh, Still Got The Blues. Obviously, you know how those go. Maybe it might be an idea if you kind of have uh, another browser open. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life, but other browser open in this window in case there are things that you've never heard of that you might want to check out. I feel like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai and Dream Theatre are kind of the window that took me beyond the Thin Lizzy stuff and Iron Maiden actually before that, but I wouldn't say that I still find those things to be that incredible. Maybe my favourite John Petrucci solo might be the one from uh, Liquid Tension Experiment. Uh, Thank you. 
possibly that uh, I, I, if I had to pick sort of one John Petrucci moment, but he was definitely a huge inspiration. But looking back now, there's not a whole bunch of their catalogue that I necessarily connect with anymore, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if you've got bands like that from your past where it's like, I did really love that, but now I don't find it as easy to go back and listen to. The, the rest of this list is not like that, so that's why I've not really included it properly. I'm going to say now, I guess, Eric Johnson, and I first saw him on G3. Yeah, basically Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, and what really stood out to me was that Eric Johnson was doing something a bit different. And I had sort of skipped quite a lot of the pentatonic -y stuff, um, going from more or less the Thin Lizzy stuff already they were introducing sort of um, elements of the major scale and I had piano lessons to start so I kind of didn't really connect with the kind of pentatonic idea until a little bit later um, and this idea with Eric Johnson with the cascading pentatonics and stuff really jumped out at me as well as his incredible melodic playing so I think in that G3 performance I can remember there being Manhattan as the thing that definitely stuck out to me hugely um, but also I think he might have played SRV on there and yeah Cliffs of Dover has never been my favorite song by the way if you're watching this video Eric Johnson has a true fire course which actually has some really enlightening super up close footage of the fretboard and his fingers and you can see some of the stuff that's going on there I'd recommend that if you want to get a little bit closer to to seeing what Eric does with his hands and stuff um, he talks about some of the bits and pieces that he does and his influences in in that video but the main thing for me is that there's that really high quality footage and you're not having to go through kind of YouTube videos and zoom in on camera phones and see what his hands are doing. You can actually see it up really close with multiple angles. Um, yeah, and there's also an in the jam session with him with backing tracks that he produced specifically for this True Fire course. Um, you can use the code JNC40 to get 40% off of that or use the code JNC100 to get $100 off of their All Access Pass, which basically I think of a little bit like Netflix in that you can dip in and out, um, pick you know, what you want to view, and that's a yearly subscription. Um, you know, Whether you wanted to watch stuff from Joe Bonamassa, grab some inspiration there from Andy Timmons, Eric Johnson, so on and so forth. My favorite Eric Johnson performances are Manhattan and Lonely in the Night, and if you've not checked out either of those tunes, I think if you like the sort of stuff that I'm into, you probably dig them. But Lonely in the Night, I think, has some of the finest kind of guitar playing that Eric Johnson's ever done from the album Venus Isle and also Manhattan from the album Venus Isle. Kind of a little bit of a jazzier vibe to it than some other Eric Johnson, but really beautiful stuff and totally gives you that blend of what Eric does amazingly well, which is, for me, those two kind of elements where you've got um kind of the amazing chordal playing which you weren't seeing on G3 from the other guys And then, you know, amazing lead playing on top of that. For me, it was the first time I can remember really sort of seeing someone that was putting together chords that sound unlike any chords that I'd heard before. Um, really unique sound and his kind of hybrid approach with the right hand. But also these lead lines that I really spoke to me in the tone. So Eric Johnson, and I think probably I'd have to put him now at probably my top kind of influences, I reckon. As well as that, Pat Metheny is a, a, a cat that spoke to me. Um, I'm not sure. This might have been my gateway into jazz. Maybe George Benson, then Pat Metheny. The stuff that speaks to me from Pat Metheny might not be the, the, the favourite stuff, but my favourite tune of his is probably Tell Her You Saw Me, which is this beautiful ballad. Um, and it's really chilled. It's from the album Secret Story. It's got a kind of orchestral backing. It sounds beautiful, an incredible ballad. Um, other stuff that I really like of his, I was just listening to it yesterday, Electric Counterpoint, Pat Metheny played on this like looping uh, project of Steve Reich. 
um, if that's how you say that. But it's like a really minimal project. But all of that sounds incredible as well. And of course, you've got the early trio stuff with Jaco Pastorius. But yeah, Pat Metheny, tell her you saw me. I really love. Um, yeah, that's my favourite. Then Alan Holdsworth, I think, needs to go on this list. My favourite tunes of his would be Above and Below, uh, Downside Up, which was a solo that I kind of learnt of his. Uh, obviously, you know about Alan Holdsworth, right? But these tunes, for me, stick out because they're a little bit more accessible and maybe not as crazy as some of this other stuff. But Above and Below, just a beautiful chordal piece, no solo in it. Uh, I've learnt it, or did learn it in the past. Um, but just, again, it's got some of those things with Alan Holdsworth that I like. It's a, kind of the blend, like with Eric Johnson, between... chords that you never heard. Also, if you hear me doing this, that comes from the end of Above and Below. And it's one of my favourite things ever played on a guitar. Just really simple. Um, kind of stacked six. Um, so, start on your... We're kind of playing in D major. 12th fret, 12th fret, slide up to the 14th. And then 11, 10. Really tricky, but I think sounds like a great way to end a piece of music if you're thinking about how to do that. Okay, then other things that I wanted to, to make mention of, Get You Back by Sean Lane um, just really spoke to me because it's an incredibly melodic piece of music. Um, but also like the Blazing Fast stuff, and I think Sean Lane was a big fan of Eric Johnson, so for some reason that is like my favourite Sean Lane tune. Uh, I think it's probably a bit of a casual take, but yeah, Sean Lane. Um, incredible player, and that one, yeah, I love. Then a little bit of outside of the, the realm of maybe what you might have heard, and this is what I was kind of vibing on on the intro, there's a cat called Marco Sfogli. Um, he played on James Labrie's solo album, which is where I heard it. And there's a tune called Slightly Out of Reach, which sounds a little bit like the introduction, which has an incredible, I think it's from Alex Argento, keyboard sent, uh, solo, which then leads into an incredible guitar solo from Marco Sfogli. Um, a really melodic player, kind of pretty similar to John Petrucci in some ways, but in personally, for my taste, I feel like he kept a bit more melodicism, um, melodic playing, all that sort of stuff, and awesome phrasing maybe sort of akin to what John Petrucci might have been doing in the images and words day days and kept that kind of going a bit more uh, so that's one and then he has a solo album and there's a track on that called Andromeda which has a really surprising end but uh, throughout the tune it's kind of got this um, Lydian kind of vibe <laughs> I won't play the ending because I think it's a really awesome melodic thing that kind of comes out of nowhere. But yeah, that tune for me sticks out as one of my favourites. Guthrie Govan's Waves as well, a huge, huge favourite of mine. Um, the uh, introduction, or not the intro, like the, the main riff is a, a super interesting, um, sort of, I think, kind of innovative little piece of music to play. Um, a really good test of can you do that? Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it today.
yeah, that one just sticks out to me as being um, sort of Guthrie's kind of pinnacle, maybe peak moment where it's just like, wow, what is that? Kind of Michael Lee Ferkins y, bit Steve Vai, but very Guthrie as well. And then a blazing few solos, just an incredible piece of music, I think. Um, yeah, and mad to think that this was a guy that, you know, was just working at a lick library, wasn't it? And also uh, guitar techniques, um, sort of behind the scenes, absolute freak, and then kind of blew up because YouTube, uh, with the Jam Track Central thing, made it clear that this guy was uh, another level. Anyway, yeah, so that was um, him. And then I've got kind of a, a last thing on this list because I can remember this tune, and even though it was... I can't find it anymore, this specific version. There's a Martin Miller tune called An End in Itself. And Martin Miller used to post on the John Petrucci forums, and this is where I found out about him. Um, but yeah, he's got this instrumental tune called An End in Itself. And it's just a beautiful piece of instrumental music. Um, Um, uh, just kind of going between. And then the chorus has this. Uh, and he kind of goes off on it at some point. I preferred the MySpace take actually to what he later released. I don't know, it did like a fast little pentatonic run, I can't remember exactly, but that tune kind of goes between being in kind of E minor for the um, verse, or like C Lydian. Into E major or C sharp minor for the chorus, and it's really effective. Uh, Anyway, I think also like honourable mentions for jazz stuff, my favourite player, Jonathan Kreisberg, I think I Fall In Love Too Easily is probably my favourite performance of his. Um, but what spoke to me about Kreisberg was kind of the way that his chord melody kind of head playing was sort of had loads of juicy chords in it, but it uh, was all hung off of the melody. The melody kind of sings out above everything else and then the chords kind of hang off of that but he's not doing like the typical jazz rubato thing where it's like a little bit out of time or that the you're trying to cram loads of chord voices in it's more that it's kind of like singing um super melodic style with amazing touch and then chords kind of interspersed where appropriate to to kind of flesh things out but always that melody staying super prominent and the time staying solid so Kreisberg, of course julian large and Gilad Hexerman, other examples of my kind of favourite modern jazz players. Um, I don't know, let me know your favourite stuff in the comments if you've uh, got any thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours. I think Eric Johnson at the top of that list for me, and as I say, you can grab his uh, course on TrueFi and use the code JNC40, you'll get 40% off if you're looking for that sort of thing. Um, See you in another video. I probably missed some of my other favourite players here, but these are kind of just the performances that stuck out to me, I think, most of all. I obviously can't include them in the video, but hopefully it's given you some things to maybe check out if you've not heard them before. Cheers for stopping by.